Well, it's good to be here with all of you. As mentioned, my name is Liddell Steiner, and uh, here kind of representing Venture Heritage Farm, but also Tillmore. Uh, oftentimes I get asked the question, so what's the best tool if I had uh, a cultivation tool? And again, as we've already heard, that's not really that easy to answer. You need a lot of different tools in your toolbox for different scenarios that you're going to encounter along the way. And uh, what it sometimes comes down to, even though it's hard, is timing. You might have the best tool or have all the right tools, but if you're not getting the timing right, uh, with uh, timing before the rain or after the rain, you're going to retransplant those weed seeds right back in or even the timing around um, working at getting the weeds out when they're in the hair thread stage. So we've talked a lot about early cultivation, and that hair thread stage is that stage where you can just look like a little white string in the soil. The, the field looks great, but if you just get a handful of dirt up in your hand and just shake it out, you'll see all these little white threads. That's where we want to be. Uh, that's our target area where we really want to drill into. So, um, make sure that works, yep. So Venture Heritage Farm uh, is 140 tillable acres that we currently are working, five generations. My son is the fifth generation that we live on the family farm, certified since 2006. Uh, we are a small, diverse farm. Uh, and so, yeah, we have a representation of farmers here, both uh, smaller of a couple hundred to several thousand. Uh, we have 20 head of low-line Angus beef. Um, they are part of our solution in the off-season when we have some of our, um, in the fall and in the winter, we might even run them on some of our fields. Um, um, we have one to acre, two acres of specialty vegetables and rice and red beans that we grow as we experiment with. So it was mentioned that we are uh, just starting uh, some uh, experimentation with dry land rice. We're not in full production at this point, um, but we did 10 varieties this last year. And our farm manager, John Detweiler, is here with us. He has more over there. He has more uh, kind of, if you want to talk dry land rice, talk with him more specifically. Um, we also do some uh, food grade, einkorn, spelt, open pollinated corn, uh, and I'll talk a little about those as well, some hay, hybrid corn, and soybeans. So you put all that on uh, 120 acres, it's a, 140, that's a lot of diversity. Um, the farm has been a testing ground for our family, uh, different manufacturing businesses over the years. Uh, some of you may know some of the different names, Steiner Tractor, Steiner Egg Products was a dairy line of products that we created for the dairy industry, for feed, handling, conveyors, silo loaders, mixers, uh, Ventrac more recently, and now Tillmore. So uh, we've ran a lot of our different designs and tools that we make on our farm, uh, whether on the hillsides or cultivation or vegetables. So uh, the farm's been a great place for us just to experiment and grow. You can see here just a little layout of the farm, and um, uh, that's us cultivating our open pollinated cornfield uh, there in the middle. So I'm going to spend a little time talking about some of the different specialty grains that we do. Here's some einkorn. And uh, one of the things that is important to recognize when you're running um, specialty grains like uh, that are, have an older variety, whether they be open pollinated or, or einkorn, is that they are not hybridized and they are not as you know, ready for some of our um, heavy winds or some of our unique climate features. So you can see the uh, blowdown that we had there. Um, and so that's the, th that's the risk that you take and that you need to be ready to manage those and just, just recognize that uh, there might be some unique markets and unique opportunities, which we found and which some of you may find. Just also recognize some of the challenges and risks that go with that. One of the unique ones that we ran into was trying to even put the seed in the ground. Uh, with einkorn specifically, it's got a, a, a pretty heavy beard on it, uh, that long beard, and it gets stuck in the seed tube. So we, our John, the John Deere no-till planter we couldn't use because it would get stuck. Uh, so the best one we found was the IH5100 soybean special. It had the wide tubes, it can kind of flow through. But really what's best is if you can get it de-bearded really well. <laughs> so that's the ideal situation. So lodging is a challenge with uh, that. Uh, one of the things that was already mentioned kind of at the end here is on our fall on einkorn and spelt when you plant in the fall was about a couple years ago we, we encountered the idea of putting uh, red clover. We put 9 to 10 pounds, I think you said 15 pounds to the acre. We frost seed it with a four-wheeler. Um, and so we're running about 18 months with no tillage. So when we plant our einkorn in the fall or spelt uh, in, you know, October, November, um, we then will in the spring or uh, January, February, we'll, we'll frost seed clover into the ground. And you can see the different uh, kind of layers there. When we harvest the crop, then we have a full flush of clover coming up through and we will then either um, graze it uh, for our cattle 
Uh, we will just let it go or mow it down to kind of get it to regrow. Um, and then we will plow it down in the springtime. Um, and other, you know, uh, you might, if you have a limpkin, you might be able to just disc it down in, but we will do a plow in the spring uh, for our, one, our crop in that spring. So what's really great about that is, again, if you can do 18 months with no tillage and get your cover crop and just a four-wheeler throwing some seed on, uh, that's just a really good uh, scenario, at least from our standpoint. So some of the tools that we use, um, as again, there's many tools in the toolbox. We, we run six row. We have a John Deere uh, 7000 series planter that we use to plant our corn. And then we uh, do the um, brush meter uh, from uh, shoops that you can stick in that 7000 series planter to do our soybeans. So we have one planter for our corn and soybeans. We have a, a roller pump to put uh, fish or other kinds of uh, fertilizers uh, in row. And the cultivator that we use is the, just a six row John Deere cultivator. We run a set of little rotary hose, um, kind of as our crop shields that we can either lift up or drop down uh, as needed. And uh, then we run a five shank S-tine uh, setup. So there's a lot of different, you know, if you're wanting to run three shank uh, or a C shank, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, conversations about what's the best system. Do you run a wider shovel or more shovels? Um, they, they, a lot of them have different advantages in, in different scenarios, but that's what we run. Then we also run our set of uh, finger weeders that we can drop down for the in-row behind that. Uh, so there are a number of in-row tools that can be used, um, uh, torsion weeders, finger weeders, and, and also uh, other types of systems such as um, uh, burning, but um, flame weeding. But one of the things that uh, with anything, any tool, is that no tool is going to be your magic tool uh, uh, bullet. And so there are different times. And so uh, finger weeders can work uh, sometimes in some scenarios, but may not be your right tool all the time. Uh, similarly, torsion weeders or, or different, you know, it was already mentioned. There's, there's timing and there's, there's a appropriateness for, for when you might run a tool. And we can talk more about that uh, if you have questions uh, with me at some other point. Uh, we also grow open pollen and corn. Uh, this is our Wapsie Valley variety that we plant and grow. And again, as I mentioned, one of the challenges with open pollinated is uh, it can be blowdown. Uh, and so we do uh, about 10 acres of it. And uh, it's, 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 just, it's just fun. Um, it's one of those kind of fun crops that I enjoy having in the farm. Um, and you also need to make sure that your spacing is more. Don't plan to plant your open pollinated corn with the, the standard hybrid corn. You need to have more space between seeds uh, so that you have better air circulation for pollination between the crop. So that's going to be important when you try to get into some of these specialty grains. Just make sure you do your research well and understand what works and, and how you should be doing that. Um, the other thing about open pollinated corn is uh, you can reuse your seed. Uh, and that also means that you need to be planting ahead. So don't uh, harvest your crop and then go, oh, I need some seeds. It's kind of good to do a walkthrough before that. Pull out the ears that you want and then be able to have those ready for springtime. We do also use uh, both a rotary hoe and a tine weeder. Um, as I was already mentioned, they can be used uh, both um, for different uh, scenarios and for different applications. Um, one of the advantages of the rotary hoe, especially if you have a higher clay content, the rotary hoe can help you after a pounding rain, uh, rework up those, that soil and also be able to kind of help uh, release that crop from the, from the, uh, the seed from the ground if, if you're in that kind of scenario. Uh, there also is a rotary tine weeder. So there's three kind of blind cultivation tools, I would say. The tine weeder, the rotary tine weeder that Einbach makes, and uh, the traditional rotary hoe. And I was really intrigued with your scenario of putting the new rotary hose in the, the, uh, the, the, right over the crop and moving them out. That's, that's, a, that's a great idea. Uh, they do, I believe there's somebody out there that makes weld-on replacement spoons if, uh, if you're ever uh, looking for that, um, but I'm not sure what the best scenario is. But just, yeah, make sure your spoons are good in your rotary hoe. That is really important. Um, so the, this is a field of our hybrid corn there you can see. Um, and um, I would also agree with the, uh, we've transitioned from not having any end rows. Um, it's having running smaller equipment, we're able to uh, not have such a long end, but we just keep it with a kind of a grass clover end row so that we can just pick up the cultivator, spin around, and go back in and have no end rows. Uh, still do have some issues with the weeds, kind of even that last, you know, five or ten feet because as you're picking up that cultivator, uh, the trail doesn't get it, and so you still need to be man uh, managing well there. 
but that's been really helping us uh, keep the weeds out of that. It just becomes an unproductive for us uh, end row that is hard to manage, and that's just our experience. So that's a, a unique thing that I think was already mentioned here. Um, here you can see on the left, that's the rice that we just grew this year. Um, John probably knows the variety, I don't. Um, and the um, peas, uh, we're, this is our kind of a garden area, just, uh, just showing you some of the different kinds of <laughs> crops that we have and our spelt that's on the right. Um, so again, kind of developing and working through uh, having a, a wide range of, of, of variety of crops. Specialty grains can find you some unique markets and some unique, unique, unique niche, uh, niches, especially with bakeries or restaurants and things like that uh, is an opportunity for us to continue to diversify. One of the things that we're also looking at is some red beans, uh, but again, anything that you do has a consequence of machines that you need to be able to manage those well. And so that's uh, the big question uh, as you move forward, um, jumping in. So uh, as I mentioned already, I do work with a company, Tillmore. It's our family-owned business. Um, Tillmore has uh, initially and primarily focused on or mechanical weed control in the um, small and diversified vegetable arena. Uh, that has been our primary target and primary focus for the first number of years. We've developed a line of tractors and um, uh, walk behind tools to really help the vegetable industry be able to manage uh, and cultivate very well in that, in that way. That's our tractor, which is kind of based after the Alice Chalmers G. Again, not very helpful when you're trying to do several hundred acres, um, but clearly uh, as, a, as a niche in, in a very specific area. Um, we are um, continuing as we now have really kind of felt that we've kind of put a stake in the ground in, the, in that vegetable arena um, and really have a nice uh, line of equipment. We're starting to branch in further to more row crop growers and how we can um, use our tools and our cultivation um, equipment and our experience and our manufacturing to also expand further in there. And so um, here we uh, have a grower in Michigan who uses our torsion weeders and adds them to his IH uh, parallelograms, kind of just as an additional kind of in-row weeding tool. Uh, he, does, he has three cultivators like that. He's doing 20 inch row spacing and all three cultivators set up with the torsion weeders for that in-row cultivation. Uh, we also have our finger weeders, which I have mentioned back there that can be added on to most any cultivator. Uh, and we're exploring some ideas with a local dealer, Lau and Young, about maybe developing some parallelograms uh, that can be added on to old toolbars or be able to people to make their own toolbars, kind of a traditional parallelogram. So if any of you have any observation or ideas for us or suggestions, we're open to ideas. Uh, we want to serve and support the industry as well. So that's what I have here. Um,